So hello there. My name is Eric Chabot, and if you are watching this, then you are going to find out the ministry that we do here for CJF Ministries, and I hope this clip is informative. Um, I am the Midwest representative for CJF Ministries. You have gone to the website here. I assume that's where you're seeing this link, so you can see my page there. But anyway, I have been with CJF Ministries since 2005. And in this clip, I'm going to talk a little bit about the ministries we do on college campuses here in Columbus, Ohio. Now, we are located here in Columbus, Ohio at The Ohio State University and Columbus State Community College. Columbus State Community College is a little smaller school than Ohio State, as you can see. It's got about 30,000 students, but Ohio State has 64,000 students. So since 2005, uh, we have been at the Ohio State University, but we started doing ministry at Columbus State Community College about four or five years ago. So we added that on to what we were doing. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what we do, which is called evangelizing, equipping, and educating at the Ohio State University and Columbus State Community College. Now, as I said, the uh, evangelizing, equipping, and educating, those are the three E's we focus on on these campuses. So if someone asks what we do, I always say we have three focus areas, and these are the areas that we focus on, evangelizing, equipping, and educating. So I'm going to expand on these a little bit here, each one. Now, when it comes to evangelism, of course, that is just sharing the good news we announce the good news, the gospel, and we leave the results to God. And of course, we believe that the power is in the message itself. It is not in the messenger. And we obviously desire to share the good news with everybody on campuses, on these two campuses. That is our first goal is to share the good news. So, you know, there's no doubt that probably every student we've ever had a conversation with that we weave in the gospel or talk about the gospel, right? And so that is our main goal is to share the gospel. Now, what we found out when we started doing evangelism at the Ohio State University is that graduate, obviously that uh, students have a lot of questions about Christianity, about biblical faith, about all kinds of issues. And of course, with the advent of the internet, they can get access to just about anything. And so what we found out is that it, it, it became almost impossible just to do basic evangelism without apologetics on both of these campuses. Now, I personally believe that it's very difficult to do evangelism at all these days without apologetic training, because there's just too many different belief systems out there, too many objections, too many things on the internet. And so without some sort of apologetic training, it's it's going to be hard to do any outreach these days. So we decided to start a an evangelism and apologetics ministry at the Ohio State University about 2008 and 2009, around that range, 2008 to 2009. And our goal was not only to help people to be more equipped in evangelization, but to help students get answers to their questions, to get built up in the faith, to know what they believe, why they believe, to be equipped. And basically, they could come to a safe place knowing that there's a student club on campus where they could learn to really ask about the big questions and discuss the big questions that they had. And also, we wanted to be a ministry where the skeptic or the people don't, that don't really think that other Christian ministries can answer their questions, they know that they could come to us with those tough questions, tough objections. So we have been really steadfast in having that evangelism and apologetics ministry for many years on the campus, and it's just gone on and on. So you will see here some of our pictures, and we are out doing outreach. Um, some of the students we have in our group, our student organization, are helping us as well. When we're talking to different students about you know their belief systems, and of course talking about the gospel, we have many volunteers that come out with us as well on campus, and they talk to students with us. I'm not like a lone ranger out there. I have a whole team that we use. And we have, of course, have had many, many conversations. Now, one thing that we do on a regular basis is we do a lot of whiteboarding, which means that we ask big questions on the whiteboard, and then we let students come up and answer the question, and then we get into these conversations with them. And obviously, 
you're going to get people that answer in different ways, but it certainly opens the door to talk about the gospel. It opens the door to talk about all kinds of things uh, as far as like worldview questions. And so this has been very effective. Um, we certainly have seen many people come to know the Lord through this, um, you know, this method. Last year, we saw over 130 people, I believe, come to faith in the Messiah. Um, so we come up with different questions and we certainly think that God uses this because it's non-confrontational and basically people can choose to engage or not engage. And it gives us the opportunity to say, Hey, you want to answer the question? And then if they answer a certain way, we can talk to them about it say, why'd you say yes? Why'd you say no? Why'd you say, I don't know. And that allows us an open door to share the gospel and to get into these conversations. There's some more pictures of us out on campus and students, vol student volunteers here. Um, you may notice that the does God exist question is a very popular one. And the reason we use that question a lot is because we believe the question of God's existence is the question of all questions. It impacts every area of reality. And so we do not assume anyone on the campus automatically believes in God, but there are many people on the campus that do believe in God, as you can see by the tallies here. Of course, some people said no, and I don't know. But not everybody's an atheist. Um, not everybody's a skeptic. But we uh, certainly believe this is one of the most important questions to ask. And here I am out on Columbus State doing some equipping and evangelization as well. But you know, some of these worldview questions, some other ones, you know, we use, um, these are the questions that impact people's lives. And we believe that they're springboards to share the gospel, um, you know, talking about can all religions be the same or is their objective morality without God or what makes humans valuable. And we definitely have seen, you know, some really good conversations come out of these. Now, one presentation, one thing that we uh, do on campus as I said, besides evangelizing, is educating and equipping, okay? And one of the ways we do this is through bringing in really well-known apologists to speak on the campus about evidence for God or evidence for the biblical worldview or evidence for the resurrection or just some sort of major issue like uh, science topics or history topics. I'll show you more in a second here. But one presentation we have done several times is called I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist. And this is a book that was written by Norman Geisler and Frank Turk. It came out in the early 2000s, but very well-known bestseller. So we have had this presentation done many times on campus. And I can show you pictures of Dr. Turk here. He's speaking on the topic, I Don't Have Faith to Be an Atheist. These are some of the times we've had him here on campus because we've had him here probably at least eight or nine times. And as you can see, we get some pretty good turnouts for Frank, Dr. Turek. He is a very well-known popular speaker, and it's really had an impact on a lot of people. We certainly have heard results. We've talked to people who have come to the presentations, and they really appreciate them. There he is again, right there. So as you can see, that has been a very good uh, presentation for us to use on campus. Now, remember that many people have never heard a public presentation on the truthfulness of the Christian worldview. And so this may be one of the few times they're ever going to hear, especially on a college campus. But let me talk a little bit about Jewish students, okay? Because as you know, as CGF Ministries, uh, as you see here, we have a focus on reaching Jewish people for their Messiah. And what I found out when I started going to college campuses, especially the Ohio State University, was that even though they have Ohio State has about three to 5,000 Jewish people on campus. Uh, the reality of it is that many Jewish students don't believe in God, okay? And they are mostly agnostic or mostly secular. And I very rarely deal with an Orthodox or a practicing observant Jewish person. I mostly deal with cultural Jewish people who really don't really know what to think about the God question. They don't have a relationship with God. They're agnostic. Some of them um, have never really thought deeply about it, or they have, and they just simply are kind of stuck in their atheism or agnosticism. And as I show you in these articles here, there's no doubt that in the Jewish community today, you do not need to believe in God to be Jewish. You can be Jewish ethnically or Jewish culturally. You do not have to profess a faith in God. 
And so it's just very interesting that, as I said, that the majority of Jewish students we run into don't believe in God. There have been, there's a, there was a Pew survey that came out a, a few years ago, I think it was 2019 here, that says that overall, about a quarter of U.S. Jewish students, 27%, do not identify with the Jewish religion. They consider themselves to be a Jewish ethnically, culturally, or by family background, and have a Jewish parent or were raised Jewish, but they answer a question about their current religion by describing themselves as atheist, agnostic, or nothing in particular rather than Jewish. Among Jewish students under 34 and 10 describe themselves in this way. And that's really what I see on campus on a regular basis. Now, Dr. Michael Brown, who is the well-known Messianic Jewish apologist, who's a friend of mine, he's done a fabulous job in providing us with his five-volume set, Answering Jewish Objections to Jesus. And those are fantastic resources, but those books are generally geared towards the Orthodox community or the Jews for Judaism crowd or the anti-missionaries. Um, they're not really as geared towards a secular Jewish person, the kind of people I deal with on a regular basis. So we find that uh, we we had a we had an event on campus uh, um, a ways back, as I'll talk about. A friend of mine who's a resurrection scholar and a resurrection apologist debated a Jewish atheist on the evidence for the resurrection. And we co-hosted this event with another student group. It was called Resurrection or Reimagine. And Larry Shapiro is an atheist who teaches at, I think, the University of Wisconsin, but he is Jewish by ethnicity. But he definitely doesn't believe in God. He definitely doesn't believe Jesus rose from the dead. So we did a debate with him and my friend Mike Lacona. You can watch that online. I'll talk more about that a little bit. But... There is a well-known Jewish uh, writer, academic, named Jonathan Haidt, and he wrote a book called The Righteous Mind, Why Good People Are Divided by Politics and Religion, And but he professes himself as a Jewish atheist, but his nephew has been a student at Ohio State for several years, and we've had many, many conversations with him about the God question, about his beliefs, and once again, there it is, another Jewish atheist. So... I just want to tell you in this presentation that the kind of Jewish people that we deal with mostly are not practicing or orthodox. They're mostly culturally Jewish or just ethnically Jewish, and that's it. So that's why we focus on these presentations. Some of these presentations are more geared towards reaching a skeptical mindset at times, because like I said, I mean, I would tend to see more Jewish people in an event like this than I, you know, you think, because a lot of them are just secular, Okay. Now let me move on, and then we did a present. We did a debate with uh, another student organization between an atheist chemist and a Christian philosopher on why human beings have worth, why are they why are they valuable, why do they matter. That was a ways back, so that was a, an event, more of an educating and equipping event. And then we've done some other smaller lectures. We've done some science events um, with Dr. Michael Strauss. He lectured on scientific evidence for God. He's a physicists at the University of Oklahoma. And then we did, uh, we've had James Wallace to the campus, Dr. or I'm sorry, D James Warner Wallace. He's a very well-known Christian apologist, and he lectured on the moral evidence for God. That was a ways back, and uh, that went really well. And then we, as I said, we did that debate here back in 2017 on the resurrection. And then we also did a debate when we first started our student uh, apologetics Ministry, we did a debate with Dr. Michael Brown and Bart Ehrman, and they did a debate called Does the Bible Provide an Adequate Answer to the Problem of Suffering? That's from a ways back. You can watch that online, but that was one of the first events we ever did. Then we, like I said, we've had some smaller lectures, a few more. We had Dr. Michael Brown lecture on Is Jesus the Jewish Messiah? We've had two lectures on the resurrection. Um, we've had... Uh, Dr. James Tor here. Dr. Tor is a Jewish believer, and he is a in charge of the chemistry department at Rice University. He came and lectured on the origin of life, showed us how the uh, the evidence in science, as far as trying to figure out how life can come from non life, non life is still a perplexing perplexing problem in the scientific community. They have not figured it out. So he is a very, very uh, devoted person to the Messiah. He was raised Jewish, and he's having an impact there. But he's a well-known synthetic chemist, and we had him come speak at Ohio State. And then, like I said, we do more equipping. We have meetings. We have meetings every week where we 
do apologetic topics and Bible studies for students. We equip them in their faith. We do the Bible studies and we have that way, that way students can build community as part of discipleship. And then there I am equipping some students outside there at Columbus State, equipping them in their faith. And here's another friend of mine doing a presentation for uh, our students at a meeting, a weekly meeting. And that went really well. And then there we are recently doing an equipping meeting um, on campus with students. So yeah, these are really helpful. They build community and they certainly give students the opportunity to ask their questions. And, you know, then they go out and engage people on campus and they talk about some of the encounters they're having. So I just want to mention a few resources. If you want to get a few of my books, they're very short. A few of them, a few of them are on Amazon and you can buy those on Kindle. They're very cheap, but anyway, they're, what I have one called Does God Exist? Why It Matters. I co-wrote with a friend of mine, co-wrote with a friend of mine, and then I have is Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah, and then I have the resurrection of the Jewish Messiah. You can get those on Amazon. My website is called thinkapologetics.com. I have a YouTube channel. Just type in Eric Chabot, and you can find a lot of information on there. We do a Zoom call every week, every Monday night for equipping. We do an apologetics topic, and then we put the recording up on the YouTube channel. So you're welcome to watch those. I just want to mention a couple endorsements. Um, I mentioned James Warner Wallace. He's a friend of mine, very well-known Christian apologist, written some really excellent books. And he gave me an endorsement here. He says, if you're interested in raising up the next generation of people who can defend their faith at the university level, I encourage you to support the work Eric Chabot is doing on college campuses. He directs two apologetic ministries at Ohio State and Columbus State Community College, two campuses reaching nearly 100,000 students. No one is doing a better job reaching campuses for the Lord. And then Dr. Turk said that many Christian students who attend a secular university graduate without their faith intact, not because the evidence for Christianity is weak, but because they didn't run into a person like Eric Chabot. Eric is a bright beacon of truth at a high state university. He's been skillfully engaged in students there for nearly 20 years. And so thousands of students see the reasons for the hope they have. Every time I've spoken at OSU at Eric's invitation, was almost every year. I'm amazed by the reach and effectiveness he has on the campus. So we certainly are thankful for these endorsements, but the reason I have this clip is because if you found me here, you, if you would like to partner with us and support what we do, you can go to the website right here and click on the donate tab, and that will explain, um, give you the opportunity if you want to be a monthly supporter, a monthly partner. But uh, we certainly want people who believe in what we do. Um, the work is endless at both of these campuses. There are hundreds of thousands of students, as I said, many new students every year. Hundreds and hundreds of converse, thousands of conversations are taking place. Many people are coming to faith and many people are getting equipped in their faith. So I ask that you prayerfully consider supporting us and partnering with us on a regular basis. But I hope you enjoyed this and have a blessed day.